Why Savik cried at Spock's Star Trek death despite being a Vulcan? Why does the Vulcan Lieutenant Savik, Kirstie Alley, cry over the death of Spock, Leonard Nimoy, in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan? Directed by Nicholas Meyer, the second film starring the cast of Star Trek, the original series introduced L.T. Savik as the protege of Spock. Savik serves on the bridge of the USS Enterprise during the conflict that resulted when Khan Noonien Singh, Ricardo Montalban, steals the planet creating Genesis device. Lieutenant Savik learned a great deal from Admiral James T. Kirk, William Shatner, in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, but she taught the Starfleet legend a thing or two as well. Kirk realized Savik was right about quoting regulations when Khan's stolen USS Reliant caught Jim with my pants down and disabled the Starship Enterprise. Throughout Star Trek II, Savik conferred with Spock, even marveling that Kirk was so human. But for a Vulcan, it's Savik who displayed the very human emotion of grief as she openly wept over Spock when the Vulcan science officer sacrificed his life to stop Khan. Lieutenant Savik's very unVulcan like crying over the death of Spock at the end of Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, is because of her deleted backstory. L.T. Savik was originally conceived to be half Vulcan and half Romulan. The screenplay for Star Trek II describes Savik's shared heritage, which was meant to echo Spock's own half-human and half-Vulcan duality. Romulans don't suppress their emotions as their Vulcan cousins do, and L.T. Savik showed her grief upon Spock's heroic and tragic death. However, since Star Trek II never stated Savik's ancestry on screen, a line from Spock explaining her dual heritage to Kirk was cut from the film, Savik is presented as a full Vulcan. Yet Savik's original intention as a half-Romulan remains with her crying and mourning Spock. Leonard Nimoy made Savik more Vulcan in Star Trek III as the director of Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. Leonard Nimoy's approach to LT, Savik differed greatly from Nicholas Myers in Star Trek II. Kirstie Alley didn't reprise Savik in Star Trek III due to a pay dispute, and Robin Curtis was cast to play Savik in the sequel that resurrected Spock. Leonard Nimoy personally coached Robin Curtis on how to portray a Vulcan, and this is why Robin's version of LT, Savik is cooler and more logical, and Kirstie Alley's more tempestuous Savik. Under Leonard Nimoy's guidance, Robin Curtis's LT, Savik displayed no outward emotion as a Vulcan. When David Marcus, Merritt Buttrick, was murdered by Klingons, Savik reacted properly as a Vulcan, and she didn't cry over David despite the close relationship they shared in Star Trek III. While it's canonically the same character in both Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, Robin Curtis's LT, Savik doesn't display the traces of her deleted Romulan heritage that Kirstie Alley's LT, Savik did. In the Star Trek universe, Vulcans are well known for their strict adherence to logic, reason, and emotional control. So, when Lieutenant Savik sheds a tear at the death of Spock in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, it raises a profound question. Why would a Vulcan cry? On the surface, this might seem out of character, but beneath the layers of Savik's Vulcan demeanor lies a more complex emotional and philosophical explanation. Savik's tear speaks to the intersection of logic and emotion, the nature of her relationship with Spock, and the inherent struggle between her dual heritage. Savik's dual heritage Vulcan and Romulan, one important factor to consider when exploring why Savik cried is her heritage. Though primarily identified as Vulcan, Savik is actually of mixed Vulcan and Romulan ancestry in the broader Star Trek canon. The Romulans, a species closely related to Vulcans, embrace their emotions rather than repressing them, making them an intriguing foil to the typically stoic Vulcans. This mixed heritage complicates Savik's emotional landscape, setting her apart from other Vulcans like Spock, who strictly adhere to Vulcan logic. Savik's Romulan side may account for her visible emotional response. While she was trained in the Vulcan way of controlling her emotions, her Romulan half would make it more difficult for her to fully suppress them. This internal conflict is a core part of her identity, and her tear at Spock's death reflects this tension. Despite her Vulcan training, her Romulan side may allow her to feel grief more deeply and this emotional outpouring slips through at the moment of Spock's ultimate sacrifice. Mentor and Student The bond between Spock and Savik beyond her heritage, Savik's relationship with Spock is also a critical factor in her emotional response. Throughout the Wrath of Khan, it is clear that Spock serves as a mentor to Savik. 
their interactions are not merely professional, Spock takes her under his wing and guides her, offering wisdom and support. As a fellow Vulcan, Spock represents an ideal that Savik likely aspires to a model of the Vulcan philosophy of logic and emotional control. This mentor-student bond is deep, perhaps deeper than what is explicitly shown on screen. Spock is not just a commander to Savaki, he is a personal guide in her journey to reconcile her Vulcan and Romulan sides. His death, therefore, is not just the loss of a superior officer, but the loss of someone who helped shape her sense of self. It is no surprise, then, that this profound personal connection would evoke an emotional response from Savik, even if her Vulcan training discourages such displays. Moreover, Spock's death is not just any death, it is a heroic sacrifice for the good of the entire crew. Savik, as both a Vulcan and a Starfleet officer, understands the significance of this act on an intellectual level, but she also feels its emotional weight. Spock's sacrifice epitomizes the ideal of selflessness and witnessing this could easily evoke deep respect and sorrow in Savik, despite her Vulcan upbringing. The conflict between logic and emotion Vulcans are taught from a young age to suppress their emotions, adhering to a philosophy of pure logic. However, the presence of emotions never fully disappears. The struggle to control and suppress these feelings is a lifelong one, and moments of extreme emotional duress can cause cracks in this facade of control. Spock's death represents one such moment for Savik, where the emotional weight of the situation momentarily overwhelms her Vulcan control. Even for a Vulcan, suppressing grief at the death of a close friend and mentor would be an immense challenge. The tear that Savik sheds is not a sign of emotional weakness or a failure of Vulcan discipline, but rather a testament to the depth of the bond she shared with Spock. In this moment, logic alone is insufficient to contain her sorrow and the tear is a brief but powerful glimpse into the emotional turmoil beneath her logical exterior. Spock's own influence, Savik's emotional response, can also be seen as a reflection of Spock's own complex relationship with emotion. Although Spock is often portrayed as the epitome of Vulcan logic, he himself struggled with his human side, which allowed him to feel and express emotions more openly than most Vulcans. His willingness to acknowledge, if not fully embrace, his emotional side may have influenced Savik. As her mentor, Spock's example could have shown her that it is possible to feel deeply while still adhering to the principles of logic. In fact, Spock's final moments in the Wrath of Khan are marked by a quiet but unmistakable emotional undercurrent. His farewell to Kirk, I have been and always shall be your friend, is a deeply emotional expression, even if delivered in a restrained Vulcan manner. Savik, witnessing this, might have been moved not only by the fact of Spock's death, but by the profound emotional honesty in his final words. Spock's ability to acknowledge his emotions in his last moments may have given Savik permission, in a sense, to feel and express her own grief. Conclusion The humanity of Savik's tear, Savik's tear at Spock's death, is a powerful moment, one that transcends Vulcan logic and taps into something fundamentally human. Her emotional response, though brief, is a testament to the complexity of her character caught between her Vulcan and Romulan heritage, deeply connected to Spock as both a mentor and a model of Vulcan ideals, and moved by the profound heroism of his sacrifice. Ultimately, Savik's tear is not a betrayal of Vulcan discipline, but a reminder that even the most logical among us are still capable of feeling, especially in the face of great loss.